We first learned about the scoliosis when he was in grade school, went to see the pediatrician, went to who would refer, referred us to an orthopedic specialist in scoliosis. And that's when we started to learn a little bit more about it, but we never felt like we learned or enough about that. Went from just monitoring it to wearing a brace to potentially doing surgery with a rod. We were discouraged, you know, at the time. Um, and then, you know, a friend of ours referred us to a doctor in the nearby suburb with maximized living. We started going to see him and, you know, he, he said, hey, these are, these are things we can watch and we can manage and we can treat. So we did that sort of course of treatment for a while. And I think when our son hit a growth spurt, um, you know, the, the checkup showed that, hey, this is progressing pretty quick and pretty, you know, pretty severe. And it was our understanding then that, you know, at some point, it becomes something that you really need to treat or it gets harder to treat. The number one risk for progression in an adolescent is their growth spurt, is when they go through puberty. And that's because what happens is that their trunk catches up to the rest of their body. It's called how fast or how, how relative the trunk is growing relative to the body. And as this trunk grows fast, the spine is also growing and developing. And as a result of this growth phase, if they have a curve preset in, the curve is gonna grow with them. How much the curve progresses during this stage is also directly related to how fast their growth spurt actually occurs. So somebody who grows significantly maybe four or five inches in a period of a year, 18 months, has a much higher risk of progression who somebody who grows the same amount of time over a period of three or four years. The problem is it's unpredictable. We don't know exactly when the growth spurt is going to occur, and we don't know how much they're going to grow during this growth spurt. So therefore, we don't know how much curves will worsen. But we do know the bigger the curve that they go into this growth spurt is, the more likely they are to worsen coming out in the, in the adult stage. Dr. David referred us, you know, to uh, Dr. Tony here um, at the Scoliosis Reduction Center uh, in celebration here. And um, so we just started some discussions on that and, you know, learned about uh, the treatment. And so from my perspective, it was what I'll call minimally invasive, right? And potentially, you know, just much healthier approach to addressing this than the alternative, which was surgery. Right, um, and we certainly didn't want to wait, and it gave us something to work on and work at, um, rather than you know keeping your fingers crossed and let's see how he does at the end of his growth spurt. What happens in an adolescent case is as they start to progress and the curves start getting bigger and they start documenting this t this progression. Typically, the surgeons are going to start talking about well, you're probably going to have surgery before you're done growing because they know that once these curves hit certain numbers, the likelihood of progression to surgical numbers is very, very high. So once they start down this path, the, their approach at this point is that we're just hoping it doesn't worsen to become surgical levels. And then if it does, they consider surgery. In Ben's unique case, so he was about 32 degrees when we first met him, and he was something called RISR0. It means his, he was just entering this growth phase. So RISR0, uh, patients with 32 degree curves, it's about a 66% chance that that curve will progress to surgical standards. So two of every three curves, just like his, will progress to a surgical level curve by their time growing. They will never get better on their own. So there will be 32 degrees or worse and more than likely worse. So what we did is we took this, we took it and we actually reduced the curve a significant amount. So not only did he not worsen, but he actually got better during the growth phase. And now he's risen four with a significant reduction in his scoliosis. Again, that's the power of doing conservative treatment and intervening at the right time to get the best results. You know, it's pretty impactful when you see where Ben was at, um, the degrees that were measured on his x-rays when he first came here, uh, which was, I think August of 2021, and we're not in two years yet, right? In 23 year. And so, you know, just looking at those results, you know, it's pretty amazing. So um, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, the, the degrees that I see there are almost 50% less, you know, than what they were um, when he first came. It's a commitment, you know, but I think, you know, it's definitely a commitment that we don't regret. Uh, making, right? And um, very proud of our son, you know, for just sticking through this and keeping at it. 
with how amazing intensive care is I mean, in terms of delivering a significant reduction. And we can see significant changes, 10, 20, 30 percent reductions, 30 in some small curves, even 40, 50 percent reductions. These reductions will not stick without home therapy, home rehabilitation and a commitment on the patient's level. So we can do amazing jobs in the office to reduce curves. But if there's no home therapy afterwards, what scoliosis will always do, it will rebound back to where it was and continue down its progressive nature. This is why we believe this low dose type of approach to scoliosis is not very effective because in an adolescent that's rapidly progressing and has this chance of progressing in this very rapid phase, treating it slowly, the curve is worsening faster than you're reducing it. But with this intensive care, we can reduce it quickly. However, if nothing happens afterwards, it just follows on its path. So the home therapy is key for stabilization. So therefore we can hold that curve during this growth phase and potentially which we like to do the most, as often as we can, is to reduce it again. So build a reduction on top of a reduction on top of a reduction to get the spine as straight as possible to enter the adult stage with the smallest possible curve. They make it a place that you know you already have to be here, right? So you know you don't walk in the doors going, okay, let's go, let's get this over with, right? I mean, maybe you do, but it doesn't get any worse than that, right? If anything, I think that you know when you leave this place whether you're here for 30 minutes or seven days, right? Or three weeks even. I mean, I feel like I'm guessing that a lot of people probably come and then when they leave, they, they leave encouraged. And I think that's, that's important and that's probably a big factor for us as well.